Hello and welcome to the Carl Jackson Show, your daily dose of objective truth in a world of confusion and lies. The Kamala Harris campaign seems to be sinking in the polls, and right now she's even struggling amongst black women. I want to play a video clip. This is uh, the uh, the CNN uh, poll guy, if you will. I believe his name is Harry Enten. Uh, this he he shows the margin of of uh, the the average of uh, post election surveys. From 2012 to 2020, when it comes to black women and Kamala Harris, at least in polling currently, is polling. I mean, extremely, extremely low. You would think amongst black women she would poll better. But the truth of the matter is more black women, I believe, are waking up to the fact that this lady is an empty suit. She is absolutely fake. She didn't have the 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 black American experience. This is a lady who's both both of her parents were PhDs. I'm not knocking her, but you're gonna if you're gonna lie and pretend like you grew up in the hood when you grew up in Berkeley, California, a very ritzy part of Berkeley, California, and when you grew up in Montreal, Canada, uh, please, please don't try to pretend uh, like you like you're from the streets. So here's what I believe this gentleman's name is Harry Enten, if I'm not mistaken, and again uh, he deals with the polls at CNN. But here's what he had to say. Let's roll video clip number number three and then i'm going to bring you something that i don't typically do but i, I want to bring you this live video there's a lot of news happening but i think this is more important i, I, I want to bring you a video that i've seen I, it's probably gone viral my producer sent it to me but i want you to see this video from a black woman that is suffering under the biden harris economic policies currently but first first let's go to video clip number three but here, there isn't a trend line almost until we get to Kamala Harris. So again, this is a black mar a margin among black women. Look, ba Obama won him by 93, very large margin. Clinton won him by 93, a very large margin. Biden did a little bit worse at 85. But then you look here, and you get a 71-point margin. Now again, these are large margins, but the bottom line is, when you're talking about the base of the Democratic Party, you would think that Kamala Harris would do very well among black women based upon history. And of course, she would be the first black woman president. But she's actually doing the worst for a Democratic candidate among black women since 1960, if this holds. Again, can, can you imagine how bad it is if CNN is reporting that she's doing worse than Joe Biden when it comes to black women? Now, Gabe, let's go ahead. I, I, I want you guys to bear with me. This video is three minutes long, but it's very important that you listen to absolutely every word. And I believe that the video that we just showed you of Harry Enten on CNN, where Harris's margin would be the lowest since 1960, aligns with what black women or some black women at least are feeling, you know, real. How do, how do I say that? I want to say black women that have real black women. I, I, and, and I'm not saying that to be nasty. Or, or a slight against Kamala Harris. But if you're going to sit here and pretend like you grew up on the streets when we know you didn't, please. But this is what it feels like when you are a woman that is not privileged, if you will, that's that's poor. Let's go ahead and roll this, Gay. I did not grow up a middle class child. And I am not a middle class person right now. When I talk about the struggle, I'm talking about what's real. And I know most of the Democrats, liberals, and leftists are out here just living their best life, so much so that they run up to our comment sections and try to beat us with bootstraps. Mm. I did not grow up a middle class kid. And even though I keep reaching for it and reaching for it, it did not come from my kids either. And I'm still reaching for it, and I'm still reaching for it. I can't seem to grasp it. And I will make no apologies for feeling like my voice is at least worth something, even if my pockets ain't. Even if I don't own anything, I own this. And I am going to use it, whether they like it or not. And nobody has to pay me for it. All those people in my comment section, Trump is paying you, white supremacists is paying you. I, I got $15.37 in my bank account right now. And I'm hungry. 
Nobody is paying me to speak what is real. It is real for me. Don't tell me to get an education. I got it. Don't tell me to get a better job. My job is pretty good. I make pretty good money. I cannot afford this rent. I cannot afford to get back and forth and pay for groceries and everything else. I can't. And even though you on the left and everybody else seems to be having parties at Obama's and Diddy's house with Oprah and the rest of the celebrities, a lot of us over here don't have that privilege. I would appreciate it if y'all didn't come and just rub it in. You look poor. I am poor. You need a better job. I need two jobs. Either you help or you keep your highfalutin Democrat business to yourself. I don't think y'all really understand. Clearly, y'all in a whole nother world. Y'all in a whole nother world. Y'all do not understand what's going on out here. But this supply chain is about to be even more jacked up for all those who are looking and watching. Be prepared. Okay, so uh, uh, there's no doubt that that touched your heart like it touched mine. Uh, let's let, let let's just go through some of the points that she made uh, real quickly here. So uh, first off, this is what the left always does. So she has people commenting uh, in her comment section on her social media platforms, beating her down on social media because that's the, well, that's what the left does. All right, uh, when they they don't want you to use your voice, they want to silence you, they want to shame you, and you cannot do it. This lady said that she's reaching for the middle class, but it's out of grasp. It's under it's out of grasp during the Biden Harris administration. Biden inflation is absolutely killing her. Kamala Harris has gone on the view and admitted that her policies aren't going to be any different than Joe Biden's. Uh, and as a matter of fact, now she's offering reparations to black men. Uh, and so, listen, if she gets in office, she's going to spend even more of your money. Inflation is going to go even higher. She's talking about price gouging. So it's not going to be long before we have lines and grocery stores. If that were to come to fruition, this lady is an absolute disaster. But she's pushing people like this out of the middle class. And this is why Kamala Harris can't do as well with black women as her predecessors, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. Uh, Kamala Harris is an absolute disgrace. But I love what this woman said. You cannot take her voice away. She's going to continue to use her voice, despite the fact that many people on the left will try to silence her instead of listen to her. But that's what the left does. All they can do is beat you down. They don't have facts. They don't have solutions, but they have threats. They have fear. They have anger. They have shaming, just like Barack Obama tried to do uh, to black men earlier this week and just try to shame us and guilt us into voting for Kamala Harris and just ignore the policies. Just vote for the black woman who, by the way, is actually uh, who's actually Asian and Jamaican or Indian and Jamaican. I, I mean, it's just absolutely insane. No one is paying me to speak what is real, she said, because obviously uh, if you're a black woman in America and you don't, your thoughts aren't aligned with the Democrat Party, then somehow you're being paid off by Trump. Isn't it amazing? You're being bought. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris is proposing policies to buy black men, to buy black men's vote. She says that she can't afford rent. And I believe this is intentional. I believe the left wants to price the middle class out of housing, just like they've done in California. If you guys go to California, all these regulations, not a lot of new building, tons of illegals that come into California, everybody competing for jobs, everybody competing for housing. The price of housing has absolutely skyrocketed, not to mention crime and homelessness and all this other stuff. With the Democrat policies there, this woman said that she needs two jobs under the Biden-Harris administration and then admitted that Democrats are out of touch. Democrats have become the party of the elite. That's who they are. That was a powerful video by this lady. I want to get to some news. I didn't speak about this earlier, but I think it's a very important point. There are tensions that have arisen between the Biden-Harris administration and this news broke over the weekend. Uh, and it's absolutely, absolutely obvious to me. Also, you may not have heard about this, uh, but I do want to bring this to you. Uh, Kamala Harris has been accused 
of plagiarizing. So that's very interesting. Uh, apparently, this lady, <laughs> apparently, uh, this lady loves lying about stuff. This is uh, this is absolutely astounding. So let me let me find this real quick. I had it up on my phone and for some reason uh, it's disappeared. But Christopher Rufo has done some excellent work. Uh, you can find him at real Chris Rufo on X. And he says exclusive Kamala Harris plagiarized at least a dozen sections uh, sections of her criminal justice book. Smart on crime. This according to a new investigation. The current vice president even lifted material from Wikipedia. And then he says, we have the receipts. This is all already accumulated uh, 19 million views. Absolutely insane. So this lady, it seems this is legitimate uh, that she's a plagiarist. And why would we doubt it? This is a lady that lifted Joe Biden's own campaign website for herself. Kamala Harris will be a disaster. And I really believe, listen, I I I I don't like uh I don't like predicting. <laughs> I don't like predicting. I've been horrible in the past when it comes to the elections, but I, I gotta be honest, I don't see the enthusiasm for it. The only place that I see enthusiasm for Kamala Harris is online. That's the only place. I see I see some uh some voters down the street from my house. I, I see a few signs here and there, but I don't see people that are really excited about Kamala Harris, just like I didn't see people that were really excited about Joe Biden. But at the time, people there were so many people that hated Trump so much they were willing to turn the page and vote for Joe Biden. This isn't the case because now Biden and Harris have been in office for nearly four years and they have a record. And it's not panning out well. And people are experiencing the pain. You hurt that lady. She can't even jump to the middle class. She's it, it, it's out of her grasp. She has a good paying job. But when inflation eats away at the money, it, it's basically a tax on the poor. So when inflation eats away at your money, I, I, you're making less. you got a pay cut. So the Biden Harris administration has given this lady a pay cut. It's absolutely insane. But this is where uh, this is where we find ourselves right now. All right. I also want to share. Also want to share this. So this this team, the the um, I'm just making sure real quick here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. OK. Oh, man. Yeah. And we shared the video yesterday of uh of Bill Clinton basically coming out and saying, yeah, listen, if the if the border were secure, if these illegals were vetted, then. Uh, Lake and Riley basically wouldn't have been killed. Now, he didn't name her. But I, I don't know that this is I, I don't know if Democrats are turning on Democrats. I don't know if they're in a panic. I don't know if they were trying to sabotage her campaign. But I don't I don't suspect that Bill Clinton would try to sabotage Kamala Harris's campaign because his wife and he did so much dirt. I think they would prefer that a Democrat be in office. But it's really suspect uh, that Bill that Bill Clinton would go out and just just. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to offer her advice out loud. Listen, uh, tighten up on the border and say you're going to tighten up on the border. I'm not sure what he's uh, what he's doing. And then uh, it was a disaster when Barack Obama came out chastised in black men when he is a uh, when he is a biracial privileged academic elite. I I mean, it's, it's just insane. It's just insane. So this stuff isn't working. Okay, so Axios reported this a couple of days ago, and I just want to bring it to your attention. You may have heard it elsewhere, but everywhere that I've heard a bits and piece of this, I've heard it in passing. Let me just give you a little bit more in depth. Uh, uh, dive in a little deeper to what's happening. So hat tip to Axios, tensions rise between Harris and Biden teams as the election nears. So now 10 people who are in the know apparently said that there's rising tension between the Biden and Harris campaigns. This makes a lot of sense to me, all right? So Biden team uh, wants Harris to win the election, uh, but many of senior, uh, 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 many of Biden senior aides remain hurt or wounded by the president being pushed out of his reelection bid. And they're still adjusting to being in a supporting role on the campaign trail. Now, I've heard some people say, well, you kind of, you know, you you, 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 you got to get past this. It, it's so easy for us to say this. And I understand that these people have a role. They're in politics, but they're also people. All right. They're also people. And we're we watched we we watched history take place this summer between this coup, between the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. And then it's just both of the stories are just a blip on the radar. Some of the biggest stories when we 
uh, in, in history, we'll look back at the summer of 2024 as one of the biggest political his, uh, political summers in American history and American politics. And but those of us that are alive and here today, we just pass it on by like a blip on the radar. So according to Axios, there are too much or at least to Kamala Harris teams, there's too much uh, in their feelings. They're too much in their feelings. Speaking of uh, Biden's team, one close uh, Harris ally said of president's team. Uh, they said this is a sentiment that's shared even by some of the White House aides. They're too much in their feelings. They got some hurt feelings. Uh, they staged a coup on Joe Biden. And quite frankly, if these polls continue or continue trending in a way in which they were, the Democrat Party, they're going to regret getting rid of Biden because uh, Kamala Harris, it looks like I mean, if and again, I don't know the three weeks is a lot of time she's going out and she's doing she's doing interviews. She's doing Brett Bear this week. Uh, there's talks of her going on Joe Rogan. I seriously doubt that she'll go on Joe Rogan, but maybe she will. I'm not sure how she'll pe- perform on these things, but I suspect that she won't pro- uh, she won't perform well, as she said on uh, Charlemagne uh, Charlemagne show. I can't say Charlemagne, the you know, the G.O.D. Uh, as she said on Charlemagne show, she's disciplined. No, she's not disciplined. She's an empty vessel that has not studied and does not know the issues. Uh, the only way she's comfortable is when she's speaking as a person that is on the left. Now, this article goes on. Some on the Harris team say that the type White House aides aren't sufficiently coordinating Biden's messaging and schedule to align uh, with what's best for vice president's campaign. What's wrong with this statement? See, liberals are children. What's wrong with this statement? I'll tell you what's wrong with this statement. Biden is the president of the United States, whether we like it or not. And and Kamala Harris is the VP that's campaigning. Biden gave an impromptu press. They, they're calling this sabotage. This is where some of the frustration uh, has crept in. Uh, Biden gave this impromptu press conference last Friday. Uh, Justice Harris was about to do an event in Michigan. And that ensured that her event would not would get less TV coverage. That might be a good thing, if you ask me. Uh, number two, earlier last week, Harris criticized Governor Ron DeSantis. We all remember that. I was living through Hurricane Milton, uh, as were some of you perhaps listening to the podcast for not taking her call about the recent hurricanes. We found out she never even called. The lady is just a fake and a phony. Uh, only for Biden to praise DeSantis soon after being uh, for being gracious and cooperative, quote unquote. A person familiar with the situation told Axios that Biden hadn't been briefed on Harris's comments. So if she's going to go out there and start a war, she knows that her boss has dementia. Uh, they may have to fill him in, fill him in, fill in his staff. Number three, Biden uh, has been eager to boast about uh, uh, the robust jobs report, uh, helping to end the strike by uh, the Longshoremen's Union. Actually, he didn't help to end that strike. DeSantis did that uh, by basically saying we'll get our national, our state's guardsmen to unload our boats, uh, you know, on the dock. And I I think it scared the crud out of them, to be honest with you. Uh, Harris has been trying to focus on voters' pocketbook concerns, including inflation. Well, right now she's focusing on the pocketbooks of black men trying to buy their vote by saying they'll she'll give up to one million black men, business owners or entrepreneurs, twenty thousand dollars in loan forgiveness. If that's not trying to buy the black vote, but that's what that she learned that from Biden. Biden tried to, you know, student loans. I want to pay off student loans. She wants to uh, she wants to give uh, Americans twenty five thousand or first time home buyers twenty five thousand for a new home, which will make the, the, the housing price just skyrocket to at least twenty five thousand more. And actually, I suspect it would go much higher. Um, and the, the the tensions have played out on the staff level as well. Axios reports Harris's team has been trying to add staff to the vice president's official office uh, to handle the bigger workload. But it's been frustrated at the White House's pace and getting people detailed for that, according to two people familiar with the matter. Well, what do they expect? They got to bring everything through Joe Biden, who, again, has dementia. And Kamala Harris, you knew this because you covered up for him for the last three and a half, four years. The White House has been working to help Harris, according to Axios, Harris's team, but has been frustrated by some of the rules about who can be detailed and when. All right. So some back and forth. Several Biden aides have joined Harris's campaign, and that's led to some on Biden's team feeling like they're disloyal uh, for leaving or even considering it. Uh, But the bottom line is, listen, they kicked you to the curb, Joe Biden, uh, and they're ready to move on. And part of Kamala Harris's um, she's not good at it, but she 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 needed to distinguish distinguish herself from Joe Biden. She's not been able to do it simply because she's not a political juggernaut. She simply is not. All right. 
Uh, a White House official told Axios, quote, everyone from the president on down knows how important the election is. And we always anticipated a number of staff would want to transition from the administration to the campaign for the final stretch. But uh, uh, there's also weaknesses on Harris's campaign and awkwardness between some who were on Biden's original campaign staff and the Harris allies who've been installed uh, recently in the weeks after Harris's uh, Harris became the the nominee for the Democrats. There were squabbles about whether Biden's main surrogates on television would continue in those roles or if new fa- this would be so hard to try to deal with, because there you have a vice president who's trying to distance herself from uh, from her policies and Biden's policies for the last three and a half years. Right. Throw him under the bus when were it not for him, she wouldn't be in the position that she's in. I mean, obviously, Clyburn and Obama have something to say about that. But ultimately, uh, whether they helped Joe Biden win the presidency or not, he ultimately became the president of the United States. So he had a little power. All right. Uh, Some on Harris's team are worried the Biden campaign crew uh, that they're now working with. Uh, guys, a Democrat House divided cannot stand. Any House divided cannot stand. And that's what you're seeing here. I think you're seeing a lot of people who, quite frankly, never wanted Kamala Harris to be the nominee. Joe Biden, who actually, um, as a middle finger to both Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama, said, listen, I'm endorsing Kamala Harris. She worked to get all the delegates. You got to give her some credit for that. But she didn't earn a single vote. So maybe I shouldn't give her credit for the delegates because she never earned a single vote from the people. But Biden, as an uh, as a middle finger, as an FU, if you will, to uh, to 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 Barack Obama and to Nancy Pelosi said, listen, no primary here. Uh, We're basically I'm endorsing Kamala uh, and and she ran with it. So you can imagine how he must feel betrayed. Oh, well, this is politics. This is business. This is a blood sport. And I've said all of that before, and I agree with all of that. But this is also the we're we're also talking about uh, the human condition. At the end of the day, um, this is a quote from um, uh, the campaign manager uh, of, I believe, Joe Biden. Uh, after all, Biden's team publicly argued that Harris was less electable. Oh, OK. So this is why they feel worried, because at one point, Biden argued that uh, uh, publicly argued that Harris was less electable than Biden in the weeks after the president's uh, debate in June. Now, that might come true because we're looking at these numbers like the numbers we showed you earlier from CNN. That might be true. Um, at the end of the day, we switched to candidates who would, according to the polls, be less likely to win than Joe Biden, the only person ever to defeat Donald Trump. Uh, that's what Deputy Campaign Manager Rob Flaherty said. He wrote in a letter to supporters. All right. So he's not the only one that felt that way. Remember, Barack Obama felt that way. Uh, so did Nancy Pelosi. That's why I say this was a big FU endorsing Kamala Harris. Um, The White House spokesperson, Andrew Bates, told Axios, quote, President Biden endorsed VP Harris immediately after leaving the race, rejecting other approaches that would divide the party. But the the party is divided anyway, because Kamala Harris uh, is an absolute and utter disaster. And so is her running mate, Governor Tim Walz, and has attested to her leadership abilities and continually made clear his support for her. Uh, The person added the White House spokesperson, Andrew Bates, also told Axios, um, Quote, while ensuring that our critical White House functions are fully staffed, we have made significant changes to guarantee the vice president's team has all of the support and resources uh, that they need. A White House spokesperson added that Harris's leadership team has been invited to to strategic scheduling meetings. Again, the problem is Kamala Harris hasn't won anything. She didn't win a primary. She hasn't won the presidency. And Joe Biden is still still whenever he's lucid still trying to accomplish his legacy or fulfill what he thinks is a uh, is a good legacy as he leaves uh as he leaves the white house uh the infighting between uh the 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 staff members the president's staff and the vp staffs that's not unusual al gore and bill clinton did it uh george hw bush and ronald reagan uh also um also did it so this isn't something that's new the problem is the situation with joe biden is new because I don't know that in modern history, have we seen a sitting president, a a, a coup that's taken place like this? And then we certainly haven't seen a Democrat nominee that's taken the nomination without being in a primary. Joe Biden helped her, even though he, even though he lambasted her publicly 
he's still the reason why she's in the place that she's in. And Kamala Harris is trying to kick him to the curb without really kicking him to the curb because she doesn't have the political skill to do so. I don't think it's just a matter of being scared to do it. I don't think she has the political skill to do it. I don't think she knows policy. I think she just knows how to be a mean little leftist. But that's it. That is it. Okay, I just want to make sure uh, that I didn't miss anything um, before we close this out. But just so much news out there. It's absolutely insane. You guys heard the clip of Martha Raddatz and J.D. Vance uh, where Martha Raddatz, uh, Raddatz literally said there's only a, basically a handful. The, in, the incidents were limited to a handful of apartment complexes. Uh, when she was talking about Trinde Aragua uh, gang members in <laughs> in Colorado, which is absolutely insane. So only a handful of crime that's going to occur, only a handful of rape and murders that are going to occur, only a handful of poor people that are going to be displaced in uh, in apartments. Who cares? Right. Let them eat cake. Martha Raddatz is rich. Martha Raddatz is you know famous. She doesn't care about those little peons. That's the Democrat Party today. And that's what that black woman was expressing earlier uh, in the program. Guys, listen, I appreciate you tuning in to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast, your daily dose of objective truth in a world of confusion and lies. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you go to get your podcast. Apple, Google, Spotify, YouTube and Rumble. Por favor. Also at the Carl Jackson Show. Um, on X, Instagram, Facebook, True Social Gitter, wherever I am on social media, The Carl Jackson Show. Until next time, don't grow worried, doing good. God bless you.